scale the box, get a bigger gun. This is how we can design props right inside Blender and turn them into great concept art using ConfUI and AI models like SDXL or Flux. Flux runs slower, but the output is sharp and higher quality. This is the time AI can be used in real creative pipeline, open source, no subscriptions, no censorship. Let me show you how. I'm Anton Eski, a 3D concept designer with over 15 years in games and animation. Most recently, I worked on Marvel Rivals, before I worked on Penguins of Madagascar, and more. Along the way, I've constantly had to learn new techniques to stay relevant. AI is one of the most powerful shifts I've seen. To help others get started without the usual trial and error, I've put together a set of ConfUI tutorials and ready-to-use workflows that make the process clear, fast, and practical. The earlier you can dive in into deep AI understanding, the better edge you can get as a professional. With the launch of the new product, I provide 4-day 30% discount. Meanwhile, let's build workflow from scratch. I opened ConfUI and I've started a new, brand new workflow. I can go to workflow browse, browse templates and get image generation, which says I'm missing this model. I don't, but let's ignore it. And I have this basic standard ConfUI setup. First thing I want to do, I want to pick a different model. I will be using Juggernaut Lightning. Juggernaut Lightning is a very fast model. You can see here in the steps is 4 to 6, CFG 1, 1 to 2. I will give the link in the description for you to download it. Then I will go to case sampler and actually change those values. I will, first of all, I will set C to increment that every next render will go one, two, three, four, five step up. It's easy to check and easy to follow instead of those trillion numbers. Steps I will set to six and CFG I will set to 1.5. Euler and normal this noise modifiers, I will keep them the same. And denoise is the value that's mixing the original image with the new image. In case you bring in a grayscale a screenshot or grayscale capture, it will just turn your image into more and more grayscale. I'll zoom out and let's just control left click. I want to move this away. I want to give this whole thing a bit more space. We need to introduce the node as it's going to do the screen capture. I'll double click look for screen share from Mixlab nodes. This is the package that you will need to install through the custom nodes manager. If I go and look here for Mixlab, confirm Mixlab nodes, this is the one you need to download and install. You can see it shows some conflicts with other packages, packages I have, basically because a lot of these names coincide with other packages. Usually it's not a big deal unless you have an extremely heavy workflow with a lot of stuff bunched up together. The screen share node, it is a JavaScript here and it's giving this funny interface which is outside the boundaries of this container. I've tried to reload ConfUI, it doesn't really help, it's just a bug, a visual bug I have to live with. Before I start to run it and start to screen share, we need to build everything else. I need to resize the image that I'm getting from the screen share node. I will drag this all out. I will double click and look for resize image. Image resize from essential spec. A simple image, I will plug in the current image into the image. I will change the width to 920 and 1088. This is the values I kind of memorized because I use them in Flux as well. And they're good values for Flux and they work well with SDXL as well. I no longer want to deal with only the square images, which my previous video was about. I need to encode the image, the pixels into the latent space. And we do it using the encode, VAE encode node. VAE stands for variational autoencoder. And I will drag out the VAE coming from here to connect it here. And then connect latent to the latent image. And we no longer need the empty latent image node. I have to show this particular error which is happening. You can see my whole screen started to go into the rainbow colors. I was jumping between different workflows. I came back here and it got frozen because of that screen share node, which is a buggy JavaScript node, but it does the job usually. But if it doesn't, we have to control R reload the Chrome browser. It doesn't restart ConfUI, it just reloads the Chrome browser. And that fixed that particular visual bug. The next thing we need to create is a control net that will read the depth data. I'll double click and look for 
depth anything node and it already has a preloaded depth model you can find it in the model manager i will look for depth anything there's a bunch of them the biggest one supposedly will give you the best quality here you just click on install and it will download it a corresponding folder in your confui very easy install then you just need to reload the browser you don't need to restart confui i will drag the image to the depth anything node and i will change the resolution to the shorter side of the image in case i'm switching the numbers for the vertical portrait image I will still use 1088, the shorter side for the resolution, it will work fine. Then I need a little preview node to troubleshoot and to see what kind of depth map I'm getting. Then I need apply control net node, one big node network that is going to roll them all, roll all our inputs. I'm going to put the image in here. We need to draw, drag out the VAE. We need to pipe all our positive and negative prompts through this node control left click move this ahead and i will plug it here into the case sampler then the last output we don't have is the control net we need to look for load control net model node and i have a few i'm looking for control net sdxl this one i've already installed through the model manager i will look for control net dxl this is the one I have. I'm not sure why it says I need to install it. It's already been downloaded. You will download it, then you re reload ConfUI and it will be in a drop down here. Then I will drag this out and put it into the control net. At this stage, it's good to save. Workflow, save, Wing, share 3D. Then this is basically it. We have K sampler. It goes to VAE decode, so decodes from latent space to pixels. We have save image node that will preview our generation. A little trick I can do here, I can rename this to positive prompt so it's a little bit more understandable. And this is to negative prompt. I will change this prompt in a second. For this ARP line, I prepared a whole bunch of props I can test out. And it's more built for my product where I can run the prompt lists and have a lot of variation run quickly. So I am isolating a gun, press N to hide stuff that I don't need, and Windows button left and the Windows button right. And now I split the screens. You can do it on two screens if you want, but for YouTube, I have to do it all on one screen. Before I run this, I do want to introduce a prompt. For prompt, I use ChatGPT to help to write it. I have, and you can read it yourself. And then let's, well, do the magic. I will press share screen right here, go to window and pick Blender. Then I want to set the area. I will just drag this horizontal area and now you can see it is getting previewed the fact that the image is fairly tiny is not a big deal we are not really looking for anything great we are going to have a model approximation that's going to be fed to the ai model and to interpret it to the best of its abilities i'll click on live run and let's go check our stuff Let's run as it is. It will take a few seconds to load the models, the depth model, the AI model into the current session. And we are getting this image that's been resized. And therefore, and because we have maybe not the best proportions, it got a little bit stretched. Also, another big and important part our strengths of the apply control net node is set to one and it's trying to adhere to this depth map we've created a little bit way too much i will change it to 155 055 let's run it again and see what we get looking a bit better i do want to change the set area looks like the proportions aren't there looks like maybe this is about right let's run again and it is currently updating therefore every time i change something it will start to auto run it i can see the speed it's running at four gigs of vram i'm getting this done in 25 seconds and 40 seconds for everything to load up on 24 gigs of ram i was getting this done in like 15 seconds but we are dealing with a pretty big image it is wide and much bigger than a square one so it does take longer and you can see because the strengths of the apply control net is quite low the control net goes quite creative and it can introduce a random handling a random happening there 
there we go i like this guy this guy is quite cool a lot of gold and if i rotate this i want to bring this guy all over all over to our node and i want to do that so i can see if we're clipping the rocket launcher or not and we are clipping it i can move it a little bit more it does struggle to render in somewhat of extreme angles this is this particular image has strong perspective and it starts to create a lot of this random stuff all around personally i didn't do that many extreme angles basically none because i know of this particular issue but it was good to show it to everyone and i can start to go and remove certain parts you can see i have built it using different elements. I can just move the stuff around. I can change it all and create a different type of a cannon, different design, deleting, moving it. So it's a little bit shorter body. Let's imagine some kind of, well, cannon. And meanwhile, it did manage to do this angle pretty well. A lot of detail. Okay, this is an interesting one. It's, there's a bit of a lag because it is still rendering the stuff I was changing just before, not the latest position. This is quite nice. Uh, of course, yeah, we do have random generations, but the complexity here and the way it's trying to mimic and read the shapes as much as possible, reach the scope, reach the handle. This is quite amazing. I changed the prop to a tank and put in a different prompt, which you can read. And there we go. We got a pretty nice looking tank. Not enough cyberpunk as I wanted. I, I, SDXL tends to make stuff sometimes very realistic but lacks the creativity of flux models i find let's change the viewpoint a little bit i have the ground plane here it helps a lot for the depth model to identify the ground otherwise it can bug out and put it into some kind of foggy floating area there we go another modern tank i like the landscape behind it really reads the horizon line really well with this setup i can go and quickly change the proportions of the tank because this is just a bevel modifier right there however other other props start to float a little bit too much and now i change the camera it's looking from the top given interesting results now it's less for the real a bit more sci-fi though i wouldn't say the quality of the concept is great it did put a gun in the butt maybe it's exhaust pipe so this time i have this little block out prepared and a new prompt right here let's give it a few seconds to calculate it and this is how it's capturing or trying to capture the soldiers it may make a little mistake it's all female that will try to make both of them female though with sdxl it's tricky sometimes but let's hope it will read it better and there we go you can see how it's really well at reading the shapes the double-breasted plate on the female soldier the visor it's really putting the metallic armor on, on the forearms where i modeled them out even though you know, it's a bit hard to see that tiny then keeps the belt it's very nicely trying to follow the prompt and even the fingers for the considering it's sdxl they're not not too horrible and now we got a visor new design still a i guess it's a i would call them androgynous person neither male nor female another thing i can do here i can try to focus on a vertical image i will switch the dimensions here 1088 to 1920 and i will need to change my area i will set it and drag this out so it's kind of that dimensions and i will focus just on one soldier the camera here is a little bit intense since i'm screen this i need to press n in blender to hide the panel and that should give more quality to the soldier considering that we are giving all the pixels to one person you know what i think the quality is up significantly this is where i would need to change the prompt to start experimenting with different styles it's adhering to one style pretty well after i'm happy with this i will stop live stop share and abort if you don't want to build this network yourself, I provide it on my website. Also, there are other perks there, workflows for both Flux and SDXL. Fast SDXL setups for rapid iteration. High detail Flux setups for polished pro level renders. Ready to use Blender scenes, step-by-step -step video tutorials, structured prompt systems and automation techniques. Access to private Discord for support and feedback. Whether you want speed or quality, exploration or refinement, this gives you both. 
and lets you apply styles and prompts across multiple objects and scenes in a single run. With the launch of the new product, I provide 4-day 30% discount and see you in the next video.